Hey everybody, this is Daniel with Champion Industries, and today we're down in our training center taking a look at the ever most popular Champion UH-130B high temp or hot water sanitizing under counter dishwasher. Now this dishwasher here I've got next to me is a brand new one. So it's still covered up in all of our protective layering directly here from the factory. And we're gonna play to pretend today like this machine is installed, hooked up, and ready for your use. So follow along with me as we go through the operations and daily cleaning guide for this machine. So chances are, if you're watching this video, you're also standing next to a brand new Champion UH-130B. So let's go over everything that is included in the machine, starting with this nice information packet that's on the front here. So in this nice information packet, first things up, you have a wall guide. Now this is laminated, so it can get wet. Put this on the wall or somewhere close to the dish machine. That way, if anybody walks up to it that may or may not know what they're doing, they at least have a fighting chance with that. So, next up, we have the strange and mysterious object that seems to get eaten in the night as soon as a dish machine gets installed, but you are not going to let that happen because you're going to put it in a safe space. This is your operations manual. This covers maintenance, operations, cleaning, any replacement parts, and also has some contact information for us should you ever need us for some questions. Uh, telling jokes, anything you want to call us up for that we can help with, mainly in case you need some maintenance and want to get in touch with our service department. Great guys. In the back here, we have a notice for the electrician and the plumber. Hopefully they got these before installing the machine uh, and read through them and adhered to their guidelines. Let's open up so inside the machine. So inside the machine here, coming in your brand new Champion dishwasher is the world's most useless and small pool noodle. Get rid of that. Next up, we have a complement of one peg dish rack and one flat dish rack. The peg dish racks are great for plates and bowls and cups and all kinds of different items that you would fit in here. And the flat racks are wonderful for utensils and anything else that may not like to sit inside that peg rack. So, I get a question coming to me all the time in our service department and everybody seems to get one of these calls from time to time, a champion, people asking, how many dish racks can you wash at one time inside the machine? And the answer to this question is one. The machine is rated to wash one rack at a time, even though when we ship it, we send them stacked on top of each other. So don't get any bright ideas. Wash one dish rack at a time, and you'll get the best results from your Champion undercounter dishwasher. Now that we've had that conversation, let's move on to our controls. All right, friends, we're going to take a look at the different controls on this Champion undercounter dishwasher. So from right to left, the first things first that we have is our power button. And since this machine isn't uh, plugged up and uh, hooked up to any electricity or anything like that, don't worry, nothing will happen when I turn this on. So when you come in in the morning or want to start a shift, you would just simply switch this machine on. It would start lighting up the control display here. You'll feel it here, it's filling up with water. And then also, more importantly, it'll start warming up that water and getting ready for your, net, your dish cycle. Uh, next up here, we have the start and stop button. So when your machine is up to temperature and ready to go, when you want to wash a load of dishes, you would just simply hit that start button. Moving over, we're actually going to skip this just for one moment because that takes a little bit more explanation. Over here, we have the extended wash and you have the D-Lime cycle. So when the machine is on and in normal operation and you hit the start button, if for some reason you wanted to extend this wash cycle, you would wait until you heard your pumps pumping the different detergent or pumping the detergent and then you would hit the extended wash. Now, this is gonna take a little bit more input from you because if you hit this extended wash while it's in a wash cycle and walk away, this is gonna wash up to 15 minutes. So, what this does is allows you to extend the cycle by hitting that button right there during a cycle. Uh, you could look at the clock and say maybe you wanna wash for three, four minutes because you're washing some heavily soiled wares. You would come back after that three or four minutes, hit the button again, it'll end the wash cycle and begin going into its final rinse, which takes about 30 seconds or so, and then finishes up and lets you know by this light turning off that the machine is done with that cycle. Like I said, if you hit that button after, after starting a wash cycle and walk away, you just uh, helped yourself to a 15 minute wash cycle, so it's gonna be going for quite a while. 
So don't forget. Now over here, we said we were gonna skip this for just a moment. We have our little rocker switch. And what this is, is a priming button. And by priming, I mean when this machine is hooked up to the proper uh, chemicals, being your detergent and your rinse aid, when this machine is hooked up to those two, in an event where you ran out of one, or if it's the first time you're using the machine, you would wanna press and hold this detergent button with the machine on, and what it'll do is the pumps inside the machine that control how much detergent it uses, well, this overrides them and allows you to bring that detergent all the way from that bottle into the inside of the machine. And you can actually see this nice little port back here, that one in white right there, and when you're hooking up a new bottle or if one ran out and you've got a new one in there, you would hold that button, see it snake all the way through the tube until it got to that port right there. Once you see it drip out, you're done. You're good to go. The machine controls everything from there. Same with the rinse aid. If you're using rinse aid to help dry off your dishes a little bit faster, the same will apply for that uh, pump as well. So now that we've gone over the controls of the machine, let's talk a little bit about temperatures. So per NSF guidelines, this machine right here is supposed to wash at 150 degrees and rinse at 180 degrees. Now, so when we come in in the morning and turn our machine on, what we're gonna do is wait for that wash temperature to reach 150 degrees. Now, our rinse temperature on that first cycle, or before we really run into our first cycle, may not quite get up to 180 degrees, and that's okay. Machine's doing what it's supposed to. So once we go into that wash cycle, that first wash cycle, the booster heater at that moment knows, all right, it's time to go to work. So then when the machine goes into its final rinse, it'll go ahead and boost that water up and hit that 180 degrees Fahrenheit for the final rinse. Now, if you have any issues with rinse temperatures or wash temperatures, give our service team a call. We can always help with that kind of thing. Generally, if we see wash temperatures starting to drop, or rinse temperatures starting to drop a little bit, it might just be time to do a D-lime or a nice th a thorough cleaning on the machine. Again, if you have any questions, give our service team a call at Champion. We're always happy to help. Next up, let's talk about draining and cleaning your Champion UH-130B. So first things first, we're gonna to wanna to come over and switch the power off the machine. So what that's gonna do is take it into an automatic drain cycle where it'll take about three or so minutes and drain all the water out of the machine. So in order to be able to clean it, we wanna let all that water drain out. You'll know when it's done because it'll stop making noises and humming and all that good stuff. And then we'll wanna go over and open up the door and let it cool down. Now this is very important because just a minute ago there was uh, water inside this machine way well over 100 degrees, uh, actually more like 150 and 180 degrees if you remember from our temperatures. Uh, so we're gonna let this thing cool down before we go in and touch anything. So go read a book or do something productive for a few minutes. Uh, maybe don't read a book, maybe find something else to clean for whatever, I'm not getting into what you wanna do with your time. Uh, but now that we have the machine open, we're gonna make believe that we gave it a few minutes to cool down and it's ready to go for cleaning. So, first things up for cleaning, let's take a look inside the machine. Make sure nothing got blown around, there's not a napkin in there, or any large items inside the walls or down here on the door. If there are, go ahead and wipe those down with a soft cloth or a soft sponge. Use a little bit of mild detergent if need be. Do not, I repeat, do not repeat after me and break out your red crayon again. Uh, do not use any sort of Brillo pad or any of those uh, stainless steel scouring pads or anything like that. You will damage the, uh, the finish on the inside of the machine and make your life harder going forward uh, because it'll get dirtier a little bit faster. Um, next up. We have our machine cleaned out on the inside. We're gonna grab our scrap screen. Now this will catch any of those food bits and other little items that uh, come off of those plates. So we're gonna to wanna to take this over to the trash can, get out any bigger items, and then take it over to the three compartment sink, maybe back spray it, and then if it needs any further cleaning, you can always drop it in the sink and let it soak for a little while, or again, use a soft cloth or a sponge or something like that uh, to clean that off. We're gonna set that aside for one moment. Looking inside the tank in the lower right side of the machine, we see our heater coil, something to keep an eye on is if any uh, uh, lime scale builds up on that. Lime scale loves to grab a hold of heating elements, so keep an eye on that. It looks like a chalky, white, kind of crusty thing that just builds up. Uh, so we'll talk more about deliming liming later. 
past that, we'll look way down inside there and we see another little screen looking device and that's our pump suction intake screen. We're gonna wanna make sure that is always clean. Don't let a day go by without checking that and making sure you give it a little wipe with a, uh, with a sponge or a uh, soft cloth because things will start to build up on there over time. And that is your last final line of defense before anything gets sucked back up through the pump of the machine. And we don't want to suck up anything into the pump of that machine uh, except for water, right? So keep that clean. Always look at it every day. So past that, we're going to take a look at our upper and lower wash and rinse arms. There's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. And the good thing is, if you get them swapped around, they're completely interchangeable. So the first thing I did was take off this nice little screw right here. And when you go to put that back on, only hand tight. Don't break out any tools. Don't really try to wrench that on there. As long as it's hand tight, you're good to go. And don't lose that. So this is our wash and rinse arm. There's one just like it up on the top. Uh, so same concept applies just as we did with our scrap screen. We're going to want to make sure this is nice and clean, take it over the sink, spray it out. If it gets really dirty for some reason, you can always soak it for a little while. And then also take a look at these nice little nozzles on there. We're just going to want to do a quick little visual inspection and make sure there's no little bits and pieces of anything inside there. Uh, if those get plugged up, Find something um, non-abrasive, maybe like a toothpick or a small little brush that you can make sure that these stay nice and clean because that's where all the water comes out of when you're washing or you're rinsing. And uh, if those are plugged up, well, it just won't come out. So you know the drill, keep this nice and clean. And uh, once it's clean, we can stick that back inside. Again, take your nice little screw right here that you did not lose, right? Exactly. We're just going to screw that down on there, make sure it's nice and snug, but not tight, or overly tight, should I say. Put that back on. And then, so we'll repeat that for the upper and lower wash arms. We'll put our scrap screen back in place, and if you can, if you have the ability, if this is at the end of the day and we're done for the day and we're not coming back until tomorrow morning, if you have the ability, leave the door open. This will allow the machine to dry out completely on the inside. That way we don't harbor any kind of bacteria or anything that we don't want growing inside the machine. So with that said, I'm going to close this machine up and we're going to talk a little bit about deliming this dishwasher. All right, so let's cover deliming the Champion UH-130B. And we're gonna break this up into two sections. And the first section is to basically get the machine cleared out of any chemicals. So starting with a machine that is on and perfectly up to temperature, we're gonna take those two tubes, one for the detergent, one for the rinse aid, and we're gonna take them out of their bottles. And we're gonna place them into a bucket that you have filled with warm water. Find a five gallon bucket that you can use for this. And we're going to fill that bucket up full of water and we're going to put those tubes down in it. And we're going to come over to our machine and remember this prime button right here, this little rocker switch. And we're going to hit the prime on the detergent and we're going to let that suck that clean water and get rid of all that detergent and suck it into the machine. Once that's done and you can see that line completely cleaned out and see that there's water and no longer detergent coming through this little port in the back here, you're good on the detergent. We're going to repeat the same concept for the rinse aid if you're using rinse aid. It's typically a blue or a green kind of color, but no matter what color it is, you can see it's snaking through the tube. We'll keep on priming until we have clean water coming through the machine. Once we have done that and there's nothing but water in those lines, keep those tubes in that, that bucket of water and we're going to go ahead and turn the machine off because what that'll do is drain all of that out of the machine because we do not want to mix deliming agent and something like a detergent or a rinse aid. We just don't ever want to mix chemicals. It never really turns out well. Um, <clears throat> so once we have done that, at this point, you have a machine that is completely turned off and drained. And that's what we want. So the next part of this <clears throat> is, here's the second section. Now's when we get to introduce the deliming chemical. And again, all this is in your manual for the machine on how to do this. With the machine turned off, what we'll do is open up the door and add the deliming agent. Now, speaking of deliming agent, let's talk about this for a moment. So, whether you have a chemical provider or you're buying it yourself, you always want to make talk to your chemical provider or read the instructions very carefully on how much 
a deliming agent to put inside the machine. Now again, if you have a representative, maybe somebody from one of the chemical provider companies, talk to them about it. They'll know exactly the right product based on the water in your area to put inside this machine. If you're buying it yourself, maybe getting it either from uh, you know, a local, local restaurant supply place or online or wherever you may be, you're really gonna wanna do your homework on what product and how much of that product to put inside the machine. We can't tell you that because again, we don't know the water in your area. We also don't know the specific chemical you're putting inside the machine. Just again, if you have any questions, we're a manufacturer, they're manufacturers. We love getting calls from our customer. We'll help in any way we can. Give them a call. They'd be happy to help you answer any questions you might have. So back to the process. So we'll take that deliming agent and pour that directly into this tank over here. Now again, I always have to recommend wear goggles, wear gloves, wear any kind of protective uh, PPE, personal protective equipment available to you. Uh, deliming agent is a very harsh chemical and you do not want to spill that on your skin or your eyes or anything. You don't want to spill that anywhere. So take great care when doing that. So back to the task at hand. We're gonna pour that directly into the tank here and close the door. At this point, this extended wash D-lime, this little button right here, we're gonna press this one, two, three times. Once you press that three times with the D-liming agent in there, the machine is gonna go into an automatic D-lime cycle. So what it'll do is without any of the heaters turned on, it'll fill with some water and then start to run, and it'll run for 23 minutes. So it's best to do this at the end of the day or sometime when you know you're absolutely not gonna need this dishwasher. Because once you start it, you can't stop it. So that'll run for 23 minutes and delime itself and then go into a rinse cycle to rinse all that water out. So you'll hear it drain, it'll fill back up, it'll shoot some water around, it'll drain again and then hopefully leave you with a nice, beautiful, clean machine. So if for some reason after that cycle's over, you come in and check it the next morning and it just didn't quite delime enough, you may have to run it again and do another delime cycle, either in the morning or at the end of that day. So, but ultimately what we want is a nice machine that looks just as clean as this brand new machine right here. And if you have any questions about the delime cycle, again, refer back to your owner's manual or give us a call. We'd be happy to help. So. Again, last part of this whole thing is if when you check this machine in the morning or after that D-Lime cycle and it did achieve the results you were looking for, when you turn this machine on, go ahead and let it fill up completely and run about two or three cycles and then go ahead and turn the machine off just to rinse it out and drain all that water out again. At this point, you can take those pickup tubes out of that bucket of water. You can go ahead and put the one that's labeled detergent back in the detergent. You can put the one that's labeled rinse aid back in the rinse aid, and then go ahead and follow that same procedure for priming those chemicals to make sure that they have, we've gotten the water out of the line and gotten the proper chemicals uh, back into the machine, being your detergent and your rinse aid. At this point, your D-Lime cycle is complete. I know it sounds like a lot of steps, but you'll get the hang of it and be able to D-Lime regularly like a champion. So thanks for joining us today as we have covered all the ins and outs of using the Champion UH-130B from unboxing it all the way to cleaning it, D-Liming it, operating it. Uh, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop us a line, pick up the phone, give us a call. All of our information is available at www.championindustries.com.